everyone. Uh, I'm Donna Bush and I am sitting today with our current governor of the Cayman Islands, Mr. Martin Roper, as he prepares to leave the Cayman Islands. We're just going to have a candid conversation with him. <laughs> so, Governor Roper, mm. how are you feeling uh, about leaving Cayman? Yeah, it's, it's starting to feel uh, quite imminent. So, yeah, I'm feeling really sad because it is, has been a, an amazing four and a half years and uh, both Lizzie and I have, have, have really, really enjoyed it. And, you know, as I said from, from the outset, I, I, I came here wanting to, f to fight your corner and I, and I, I feel I've, I've, I've done that over four and a half years and uh, yeah, but two weeks away now, it is, it's sad and people are coming up to me all the time and saying goodbye, so that, that is sad, that is sad, but lots yeah. and lots of positive, positive memories as well. Okay, well, we'll talk about those in just a little <laughs> bit, but let's jump right in about yep. some of the challenges that you faced yeah. Uh, yeah. since you've been here. Well, it's been a, I mean, it's actually been an incredible period. I mean, uh, you know, four and a half years, so we had so much. I mean, obviously the pandemic, which I know we're going to come on to in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a, in a moment, but I mean, the, a global pandemic during during my time here. Um, I passed the, the civil partnership law, so that, that was something as well, which I think was quite significant. We've had so many tropical storms and a, a tropical hurricane, you remember Grace? Mm -hmm. um, so there was all of that. We've had an earthquake. Um, I think there was a, what, at least one sort of big fire um, and, and, you know, of course, the, her, the passing of Her Late Majesty yeah. and, and the coronation of a, well, not the coronation yet, but the proclamation of a new king. So mm -hmm. um, there, there've been, there's been just been so much, so much going on, two governments, um, an election. Um, I could go on and on, but we don't have that long, so I better <laughs> stop there. But it's been, I hope it's been very, very eventful, very eventful. Talk, let's talk about uh, COVID-19, mm. 2020. Take us back to that time uh, and what your role was yeah. in the handling, our country's handling of, of the pandemic. Yeah. Well, I very much, um, w I mean, I worked very closely with, with the then government, particularly with, with the then premier. And I, you know, my, my role was, was to, to ensure that I fully supported Cayman mm -hmm. and, and helped to leverage and any additional assistance that we needed from the UK to, to help us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, the then Premier was absolutely clear from the start, which I fully backed, that the health of our people was the absolutely fundamental uh, policy that we, that we followed. So everything mm -hmm. else had to come secondary to protecting everyone on these islands. And I, and I absolutely agreed that that was the right policy. So we were all united on that objective. Mm -hmm. um, from a UK perspective, I, I was able to, we'd already started doing some work on the PSA, on the testing, the, um, the lateral flow testing, and right. being able to, to do that, have that capacity on Ireland, and it, we were very fortunate that we got certification just before COVID to be able to do that, so we could start that more or less straight away. Right. And then the vaccines, um, I mean, I, I, I know I've, I've argued to many people that I think came in had one of the best responses to COVID of anywhere in the world. If you look at the, you know, the number of deaths per head of population, mm -hmm. ours was incredibly low compared to anywhere else. And that right. was because of that policy of prioritizing the health of the people and getting those vaccines in quickly. So I'm, I'm very proud that we were able to bring vaccines into to, to Cayman. I went to the airport to meet them with the premier. Um, yes. a bit strange going to meet a box, but we went to the airport <laughs> to meet a crate. Um, but but those vaccines saved lives, and you know we we locked down um, quickly. It was the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and then we protected the community. And we for a year we had a, a safe bubble. Yes. Very few places in the world lived the life that we we lived. Yes. Um, and then it burst, and we had a lot of COVID. But because of the vaccines, and mm -hmm. we had well over 85% of people that had the vaccines, we were protected for the most part. So, so I think that, I think the COVID was a, was a huge success story for Cayman. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously the press conferences, everybody mentions the press conference. I think mm -hmm. it became like a soap opera watching it, <laughs> watching it every afternoon. Um, all the characters on the panel, the, <laughs> the characters in the press. And, and um, so, so, and you know, to this day, um, People come up to me and talk about those press conferences. Mm -hmm, I think somebody too. said we did 70 on the trot at one point, oh, which, wow. was, which was a lot. Yes. Um, I, I, but it was really important. I, I saw my role then as just trying to remain calm, just to, to give a, a reassuring sense that we were on top of this, we were in control of it, mm -hmm. the support was there. Um, and yeah, now all, even all the school children know who I am. So when I'm in the car and, and we go past, it, they all sort of wave. Aww. Whereas I don't think that's happened in, in the past because yeah. probably a lot of school children haven't really come across a governor 
um, like that. So, yes. so yeah, I, 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 I'm, I think COVID is obviously the, probably the biggest thing that happened during my four and a half years. I'm, I'm you know, it's I, I'm pleased I, I was here at that time to be able to support the jurisdiction. Um, but it wasn't, it was a, a real team effort. I mean, uh, so many people played a role. That, mm -hmm. you know, our health professionals were amazing. The hospitals, um, doctors, everybody played a part. The press as well. The press played a really important part, and I salute the role of you were there mm -hmm. on most of those press conferences. I and, was. And, you know, and the press had a really important role to help help um, sort of get information out and, and keep people reassured. So, a fantastic team came man effort, I think, really. Yeah. So, what are some of the memories that you have that you wow. really want to talk about? <laughs> just some little nuggets. Share yeah, with us. Yeah. I mean, there's been, I mean, just so much. I think I, I went to the sister islands a lot and I've got, yeah. I've got really, I got really attached to Brack and to Little Cayman. I went to Cayman Brack uh, a lot uh, during COVID because we couldn't get off island. Yes. And it, was a, it was also a nice place to go for a bit of, bit of R&R. &R. So mm -hmm. I, I still think I was the governor who's visited um, Cayman Brack more times than any, any other governor in history. Mm -hmm. um, and I, there were some funny things happening so that everyone knew who I was and mm -hmm. I would sometimes, I used to ride my bike a lot <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're so polite that they, sometimes they wouldn't overtake me. So I caused the longest traffic jam in the history <laughs> of Cayman Brack because all the cars were lined up. And I looked back and saw this row of cars because they, they, the first two or three wouldn't overtake me oh on my wow. bike. So, so memories like that. And yes. the steel pan, I mean, that, yes. was, that was fun. I, I, w I wanted to do that just to have, try and connect a bit with, yeah. with, with the culture of, 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 of Cayman and the region. And I think it, it really worked. And, Do you, you think know, it will continue the steel well, pan? Well, I'm taking it can. home with me, definitely, awesome. definitely. I've got my own steel pan that uh, La Paire, uh, got for me and then I paid him for that. He, and and, and so I will take it back. I've still got about four tunes and, and I, can, I can play them reasonably well. Um, but that was but that was nice and and you know he's um, he, he's a brilliant brilliant man and, and was able to teach me someone who has very little very little musical talent but he got <laughs> he got something out of me and it was just a way as well of with, you know with the schools just saying put yourself out of your comfort zone you know the way you the way you develop and the way you really improve is to do something you're not used to doing make mm -hmm. yourself feel a bit uncomfortable get out of your comfort zone and it certainly got me out of my comfort zone playing uh, steel pan in front of a thousand school children at John wow. Gray. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that was a scary memory. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you, Governor Roper? So we, we are, after, after a long time overseas um, uh, with the Foreign Office, I, we are definitely going back to the UK because Lizzie's parents are getting really, you know, a bit frail now and mm -hmm. she wants to spend some time back in the UK. So I probably am going to leave the Foreign Office. I'm still not okay. 100% certain but we'll we'll I, i'm not i'm certainly not retiring i'm i sort of certainly want to do other things but i will we will be based in the uk and the the first first few months will really be about family and trying to reconnect with family and uh, you know i've i've moved around since i was 21 as a diplomat three or four every three or four years somewhere else yeah. lizzie her father was in the army so she moved around as a child as well oh, wow. so so she just wants a permanent home that we actually yeah. live in permanently which is a new concept <laughs> for us so that's the that's the main plan. Well, hopefully Cayman will be one of the most memorable places that you all have lived. It, it will. It's, yeah. I, it's that without doubt the highlight of my, my Foreign Office career. And I've been, I think I've had something like 11 postings I was sort of counting, wow. Le lived in 11 different countries. And this has been by far the best. I think being governor creates that unique bond between, mm -hmm. between me and the, and, and, and the people, which I felt very strongly here. And I have tried to really be out there, be visible, be accessible, and, and really sort of show that I, I, I value what so many people in the community do, because we, we have, we have, it's a wonderful community, and there are so many people who just want to make the lives of other people better, and I'm in a unique position to sort of see that from, from where I sit, and I, mm. there are so many organizations who just help people and want to help people, and you know, Cayman is a it's a it's a, it's a really special place, a very special place, and I think we're all everyone here is um, it, we're all very fortunate to live in a place which, when you look around the world, it's peaceful. We, a law and order is one of the best in the Caribbean. Yes, we have issues; everybody does, but mm -hmm. comparatively, it's very good. Um, it's a it's a great place to live. Fantastic climate. Um, you know, we we have I'd say we have good harmonious relationships within the community. 
Um, and, and yeah, it's a, it's a very special place, and, and I, I think that strong Caymanian culture as well. As, and I've tried to really understand that. You know, there's uh, seafarers are, uh, uh, have invited me one more time before I go to their social. Um, I think it's the week after, the week after next. Mm -hmm. I, I, one of the nicest things I've done is just going into our senior citizens' homes, um, and I, I, the, the MPs organised some district visits and took me to meet the elders, and we went inside and met people. Yeah. I've been with Meals on Wheels, delivering meals to some of the elders in East End, in Bodden Town. And so meeting, meeting some really nice people in the community and, and hearing their stories and hearing about the long Caymanian heritage, the traditions that used to, that used to be there, that, that's, been, that's been fabulous as well. So yeah, we, we, we leave with very positive, very positive memories of Cayman. It's a, it's a really wonderful place. What would you say to Caymanians and persons who call Cayman their home, yeah. the expat community, what would you say to them to encourage them, maybe even remind them of yeah. the things that we need to do to keep things as much as we can yeah. the way that yeah. they are? Well, I, I, I strongly support our current Premier's vision and, and it's the government's vision for, a, for more balanced development. For for yes, if we have to develop, and, and yes, we need um, we need to create more jobs for people, but you have to do that in a balanced and sustainable way, and that's also one of the things I'm sort of proud of that my office has, has supported is a is a climate change risk assessment. Mm -hmm. So we we started under the former government actually, but we we brought some. UK organisations in to sort of help produce a climate change risk assessment and I'm really pleased that this, that the Premier grabbed hold of that and, and pushed it through uh, and they, they own it, they lead on it now but that will become the bedrock of, a, of the new climate change policy for Cayman which we haven't had since about 2011 so that, mm -hmm. that's really important so I, I, for the future I, I, I hope that you can find a way of more sustainably developing um, uh, the Cayman Islands so that we're, you know, we are thinking yes about, about people's livelihoods and jobs today, but we're thinking about the future, we're thinking about our young people and what Cayman Islands will they find in the future and we need to, we need to make sure that we are living sustainably and, and, and I think that's really, really important. Everywhere in the world has challenges. I, mm -hmm. I think there are some cultural issues in Cayman that, that, mm -hmm. that we perhaps need a bit more courage and bravery to talk about. I mean, things like um, uh, child, ch childhood sexual abuse, you know, that, things like that. I think sometimes the family is protected, not the child. Um, sexual identity and, and, and the taboos around that. Mental health, I think we have some mm -hmm. serious issues around, around mental health for our young people. The, the suicide rates are, are, are too high. Uh, people have thought about suicide. That, that came through very clearly in, a, in the Alex Panton Foundation seminar recently. So mm -hmm. these, are, these are difficult issues and every country in the world is dealing with them. But I, I think perhaps the community needs some more honesty, some more courage and some more bravery just to to address uh, some of these issues. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Governor Roper, any final words? Just, um, I hope we can keep in touch with as many as many people as possible who, who we've, we've met. Um, as I said, it's been a huge privilege to serve uh, the people of these, of these islands. We've, 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 we've greatly, greatly enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I do look back with, with pride at, at sort of COVID, at, uh, passing the civil partnership law. I mm -hmm. think that was important. Um, and the world hasn't changed as a result, but we've given rights to a sector of society that, that didn't have their rights mm -hmm. uh, protected. Uh, I mentioned the climate change risk assessment, setting up a regiment, which I think will add, you know, a new skill set to our disaster response. Um, I've supported financial services, been to New York to three times to speak up there for our financial services industry, which is a high quality, professional, really effective um, industry and, and, mm -hmm. and I think does everything required of it by the international um, community, so we should be very proud of that. And, and yeah, tourism, we've got you know, a brilliant product. It's everybody wants to come to the Cayman Islands. So, so there's, a lot, there's a lot to be positive about and I, yes. I, I just wish, wish everybody uh, in these wonderful islands all the very best for many, many years to come. Governor Roper, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. <laughs> uh, and I thank you to everyone out there who has listened and watched uh, the interview with, uh, with Governor Roper as he and his wife Lizzie departs the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm.